Charles is going to sit down. You got something on your shoe, Charlie. Okay. Yeah, you do. I got leave. Well, good morning. Uh, it's been five weeks since I had my accident when I was going to start this series. I had an accident on the first week. Uh, I believe Satan is at work here because it's just like nothing has gone right for me. Um, it, it's, I've just had one, one problem after another. Last week, which was my anniversary with, on, that, on Sunday, and it was a pretty emotional day for me. And the pastor had asked me, said, are you sure you want to do this this week? We'll put it off. And I thought, no, I'll be okay. Well, yeah, I wasn't okay. I hadn't slept for two days. So and this morning I'm getting ready and I'm going through my thing as I always do. And I made some changes. And then my computer locked up. <laughs> I was panicking. I pulled to pick Judy up. I'm panicking. I'm trying to do this. I was able to recover the prior, prior version. So there's a little more. I condensed it down a little bit. So uh, we'll see how it goes. This is, uh, I may want to take a break, Pastor. But let's uh, start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the... The opportunity to delve into your word, to look at the Old Testament and see uh, the historical significance of things and how it applies to today's life. I want to bless the, the rest of our time together and bless our service coming up. We ask all this in Jesus' name. I also want to thank all, the, all of you who helped me during this five weeks. I finally got a car. So um, it's, been a long, it's been a long process. Okay, so... This is going to be part four, and uh, I, I think I'm going to take a break for a week or two after this because it was just a lot of data, and uh, it's, taken, it's taken me more time to go through these things than I initially had planned on, but so we're going we're gonna to start out today. We're going to look at, look at what we talked about last week. It's going to be a little more in-depth re review because I want, I want, there's a couple of things that we've, we've covered so far that are, that are foundational to this period of time, specifically the first two kings, very foundational to all the stuff that happens uh, with, uh, with the uh, divided kingdom. Then we're going to get, we started to talk, we talked a little bit about last week about Asa and Basha, and today we're going to get quite a bit more into detail, and then we're going to finish with these uh, three kings of the northern kingdom that follow Basha, and um, Actually, when we're finished with this, it's just all about the same time, about ending about 870 B.C. So from about 930 to 870, so we're talking about the first 60 years is all we've gotten through of uh, the divided kingdom of 100, 350 years. So, so we'll, that, that, these, are, these are actually very short that uh, we will cover them. Okay, so we talked last week. Let me grab my pointer because I'll be lost. Um, we talked last week about the divided kingdom, the map. No, we won't go over that again. This is the divided kingdom as it exists. It existed. And we have covered... And just, I've got a little different graphic here. So we talked about the, the United Kingdom, and we're in this period of the divided kingdom, and we're talking about uh, Rehoboam, Abiyajab, Asa, Jeroboam, Nadab, Basha, and Elah. Okay, those are ones we try to cover last week. We didn't make it very far to those, so we will continue today. All right, so this is the period we're talking about in history. Um, Significant things that were going on. Um, uh, this is this is before the Assyrian. The Assyrians come into into power sometime near the this. They start coming into power. Uh, we talked about Shishak, uh, the uh, Egyptian pharaoh. Shishank, or for Frank, Shishank, Frishak, <laughs> uh, who started a new dynasty. He and that new dynasty began just about the same time. 
So, uh, the first king was Rehoboam. He's the first king of Judah. He served for like eight, 17 years uh, from 930 to 930, 913. And so we want to we kind of try and get in our heads what, what happened with Rehoboam. So Rehoboam, we know, he is the son of, of Solomon. So he is the inherited king, if you will, of all of Israel. He, at, before that happened, there was already, we talked about there, there were a lot of, a lot of stuff going on within Israel. There was a lot of internal strife under the surface. Things were, he was, there were enemies, things were happening. People were not happy with Solomon. They had not been very vocal. So Rehoboam comes in. He becomes the new king. He goes down to Shechem, and uh, he's going to get coronated, c- c- crowned king. And um, the people send him a delegation and basically say, well, they had a lot of problems with him being king. And we talked about this. So the, the people were like, yeah, we're not following God's rule of electing a king. But we got beyond that. But they said, well, we can follow you, but you've got to lighten up on the forced labor and the taxes. He said, I'm going to think about this. He goes, gets his advisors, gets young advisors, giving him some advice. He, he basically tells them, forget it. Not only I'm not lightening up, we're going to tighten, put the screws in to you a little bit more. So uh, at that time, uh, the northern tw- uh, ten king, uh, tribes revolt against Rehoboam. They're, 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 they're causing problems. Rehoboam sends one of his guys in to put it down. They stone him to death. He gets a message. He flees back to Jerusalem. Um, in Jerusalem, he musters an army. Uh, then he's going to go take care of them. Prophet, the prophet comes to um, Rehoboam and tells him, don't do it. This is God's will that we are going to, you're, you're going to be divided. They accept that. And, um, and, and uh, but there's still tension will continue on between the northern kingdom and the, and the southern kingdom. There's, there's, there's tension going on, but for the first uh, three years, he basically is a pretty good king. He's he's doing things. He's uh, he's fortifying the the border. He's doing he's doing a number of things that that were good. But after a few years, he starts slipping back into idolatry, just like his father. So he's not following God. He becomes a a, a very idolatrous. And because of that, a lot of people, um, whoops, excuse me, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, so he, he becomes idolatrous, and, but things are worse in the, in, this, in the northern kingdom. We'll talk about that. So even though things are going bad, he's introducing a lot of idolatry. But in those first few years, things are bad in the northern kingdom. And a lot of people are leaving the northern kingdom, Levites, priests, people who believe in the fall of the Lord. And they're moving down to, to Judah, to Rehoboam's kingdom. This is, this is actually uh, empowering, if you will, their kingdom. They become... Uh, I think we talked about before how the, the northern kingdom had a lot more resources, people and just natural resources than the southern kingdom. But God is not, as we'll see, God is not for, the, for them. He, does, he puts more favor on Judah and they gain, they continue to grow as a nation. But Rehoboam leads them down a path of idolatry, um, in, including you know, uh, introducing um, <clears throat> introducing 
idols and altars and instituting male prostitution in the temple. He, he was just, he just kept going down, downhill morally. And near, in about the fifth year, so this is going on, and he's sliding backward. In about the fifth year, God sends Shishak to invade the north. Oh, excuse me, to invade Judah. They go after, uh, they're attacking, they're capturing cities, they're, 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 they're attacking uh, Jerusalem. The people kind of humble themselves. God says, okay, I'm not going to let them destroy Jerusalem. And they ended up plundering, if you will. They plundered Jerusalem. And at that time, Rehoboam became kind of a vassal state of Egypt. Okay? So, but Shishak did not take control of Jerusalem. These are some of my slides that I had pared down in prior version. Anyway, uh, so uh, the, the prophet who had uh, warned him not to attack the north also told him that this punishment was coming to him, Shishak was coming to him because he had been, he was not following God's will. And, he, and basically said, this is going to happen to you and, and your seed and your family is going to be totally destroyed because of your idolatry. So this is a prophecy. Well, he is there. Um, uh, but they, they kept sliding morally. He eventually dies and is succeeded by uh, Abijah, Abijah uh, his son. So he ruled for, whoops, I, oh, I don't want to go to him yet. I guess I want to go to, I, I'm doing it this differently. I'm going back and forth. So, so we're going to talk now about Rehoboam, uh, Jeroboam. So Jeroboam had been a servant, an official of Solomon, one of his project managers, if you will. And he had grown in stature and um, within Solomon. He was also um, came in contact with a lot of people and he kind of, he, 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 he sensed the... Uh, the underlying problems in 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 the in the north, with the, with the people and and how much oppression they have had, he get, became very sensitive to that. Uh, he is um, he is uh, approached by a prophet, Ahijah, uh, and Ahijah comes to him. New robe, tears it up, tears it into 12 pieces, gives him 10 pieces and says, God is going to bless you. And you, God is going to make you king of the northern. He's going to divide Israel into two parts and you're going to become the king. And basically he tells, these prophets all tell him the same kind of thing. You know, if you follow my ways, you're going to prosper. So he's given that, that, that same me message, and um, uh, so at some point, at this point in time, something goes on. I don't, I, we don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us what happened with him and Solomon, but Solomon becomes aware that he's got a problem with this guy and decides he's going to do away with him. Jeroboam flees to Egypt. Now, we haven't got the kingdom has not divided yet. We're kind of backed up here. Um, he flees to Egypt uh, to the house of Shishak. Shishak kind of takes him in. Um, and so for a period of time, he is there. So he, we know he was a, probably a pretty high official uh, in Solomon's court because he, he's accepted readily by the, 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 the pharaoh of Egypt. Um, so at the time, as, as when Solomon dies and Rehoboam is, is now going to be king, Sh Sh Jeroboam returns. 
he returns. And he becomes part of that delegation that approaches Rehoboam about lighten up on us. You know, lighten up on the labor, lighten up on the taxes. And so he became part of that group of rebels, if you will. Um, they end up getting rid of the, the messenger. Uh, they, they basically split from the house of David and they make Jeroboam the king. So now we have the two kingdoms, two kings, right? So Jeroboam is there and God told him, obey me by my commands and you will prosper immediately. He begins a plan of, yeah, I, I'm not sure when I read it as to whether or not his initial motivation was to set up this idolatry or was, it, was he trying to protect and keep his people there. But he decides that yeah, I don't want the people having to go down to Jerusalem to worship because they may stay and we need them here. So he sets up. Uh, two places of worship, one in the north in Dan, one in the south in Bethel. And he sets up altars. He builds a, two golden calves and tells the people, you don't have to go to Jerusalem. Here's our God right here. You can worship the guy. And so he did that. Um, so I'm, like I say, I'm not sure if his initial motivation was was uh, idolatry, but it certainly slipped into that. He did away with the the Levites created his own group of priests, his own holidays. Um, he did a lot of things to try and replace uh, the ways of Yahweh, even though he would have been saying that he was a follower of Yahweh. But he was doing all, all of this stuff. So, um, uh, so they promoted idolatry and uh, they established these, these, these golden calves in the worship process. Uh, uh, there, there, there was continuing war between uh, Jeroboam and Rehoboam. There was just tension all the time. But it, when uh, after Rehoboam died and Abijah was, um, was king after Rehoboam, he did have a, uh, there was a battle that he had with Jeroboam. Uh, they were significantly outnumbered, and, but God get guided uh, Re uh, Ab Abijah, and they were able to soundly defeat Rehoboam, d destroying maybe half his army, s really crippling uh, Rehoboam. And, uh, well, excuse me, really crippling Jeroboam. <laughs> Thank you. Jeroboam brothers, hard to get right. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> so, like, say them all together. Um, so, um, it, it be, had been prophesied that um, Jeroboam would be king, and it also was prophesied that Jeroboam's going to be doomed and his whole family is going to be extinguished. Jeroboam does die and is succeeded by his, succeeded by his son Nadab. Okay, so he, he was actually, so Jeroboam was king a little longer than Rehoboam. So the overlap between Jeroboam and Ab Abijah, okay, or, or Abijam. And so then uh, he's succeeded by this. So going back here to um, Abijah or Abijam, depending on whether you're reading in Kings or Chronicles, the two different names, but he's, he's, he's the second king. He's only there for three years. Um, he didn't do, I mean, it wasn't there very long. Uh, his main uh, claim to fame, of course, was this, this battle in which he defeated um, uh, the armies of Jeroboam and kind of crippled him uh, a bit. So th th there was definitely, the hand of God was at work there 
Jeroboam had, had a plan. He was going to ambush them. He had set half his forces to, to flank them. And God basically helped them totally rout uh, Jeroboam's forces. Okay. So he, his son Asa, is going to be the king after him. Now Nadab who was the second king of Israel, he was in existence for about two years. Now, now he didn't do much. There's not much written about him. Uh, but what we do know is that he, there was a, they were fighting, like we said, there's a lot of internal battling going on back and forth, but they're also battling other um, other nations. So the Philistines are still out there, uh, even though David had kind of put these, a lot of these people down, all of them are starting to come back up again. And so uh, Nadab has his army and he is uh, basically sieging, attacking, he's sieging one of the cities of the Philistines. And, and uh, during that time, uh, while his army is there, uh, Basha comes in and kills him. Basha is one of the military leaders. He comes in and basically kills the king and uh, basically takes over. Nahab was not given a burial. Uh, he is, um, as he has prophesied, he died, the birds eat him. If uh, we didn't know, if you remember when we were talking about Jeroboam and all the problems he had, and the uh, and how he had sent his his son uh, Abijah, who's the same name as the king, but on one of uh, Jeroboam's sons, who was sick, and he had sent him, he sent his wife to see uh, Ahijah, the the prophet. These names get a little difficult for me. Uh, and, and he sent, the, sent his wife incognito to see the prophet, uh, to find out what to, was going to happen with, with his young son. The prophet tells him, your son is going to die when he crosses the threshold. And by the way, your, your whole family in the future will be totally wiped out and destroyed. Well, that happens. So we'll talk about the rest of them in a minute, but Nadab gets killed there. He's killed by Basha, and he is not buried. He is eaten in the field by the birds. So we start, we're going to come back to this, but next comes Asha, who is king for 41 years, and we're going to talk about him some more. And then Basha, who is the third king of Israel, and he was king for like 24 years. So this is their pretty significant uh, periods of time in the in the kingdom, and they they overlap significantly, at least at the beginning. Why is my daughter calling me? Okay, so we're going to talk about this king, and uh, he is. By the way, I didn't say this, but every king we've talked about so far, we talked about they're idolatrous, they're bad, they're evil. Along comes Asa, he's a breath of fresh air. He's a man of God. Uh, he's a good guy. So, he, um, like you said, he reigned for that. He became, uh, he began, be, began to reign in the 20. 20th year of Jeroboam. Remember, Jeroboam is only 22 years. So the last two years of Jeroboam, uh, Asa becomes the king. Um, uh, he does all these things that are right in the sight of the Lord, and he just and he cleaned house. I mean, he he just cleaned house. He he got rid of the idolatry, the temple prostitutes. He removed you know all the idols, the high places, these groves that had groves of their worship. And images. Um, he even removed his grandmother, his grandmother, who was the queen mother, but she had been promoting all this idolatry. He got rid of her too. 
So he, he, really, he really did clean, clean up. Um, and because of what he was doing, a lot, of, uh, a lot of the Israelites abandoned the north and came down. So uh, some of that happened with Rehoboam now with Asa, Asa because he is doing this. More and more people are coming into Judah. So Judah, as far as people resources, is gaining uh, quite a bit. Uh, he did a lot of things. He built cities. He fortified the border. He, he just did a lot of things in the early years of his kingdom. Um, he, he had a, a good standing army of uh, 300 uh, men from Judah and 280 men from Benjamin. So he had a thousand, good... Right? What's that? That's 1,000, not 280. Thousands. Did I not say thousand? Thank you. Thousands. 300,000, 280,000. Had big forces. And, um, and that was good because uh, not long after that, the king of Ethiopia attacks. And God's with them. They do battle with um, the Ethiopians. They rout them. Solely outnumbered. They destroyed them. They captured a lot of cities. They did a lot of stuff. They got a lot of plunder. They got a lot of wealth back uh, because of this. So this was something that was guided by God. Um, so they, they, they not only won that, but they, they took a lot of uh, plunder from, from that campaign. Uh, in, but in the 36th year, remember he's uh, 41 years, so it's late, late in his period, his kingship, um, he is um, uh, late. At the, so there's always a battle going on between the north and the south. So um, we have, the, the, they're building up uh, Rama, which is about five, five miles north of Israel. They're fortifying this place. They're building it up. And the, the, the plan of, the, of Basha is that he is going to cripple Jerusalem. He is going to hit them economically. He's going to stop trade. He's going to do all this stuff. Um, this is not stupid. He knows this is happening. But he does... He then decides, ha ha, I'm going to contact one of Basha's friends, allies, uh, the king of Syria, and I'm basically going to contact, I'm going to bribe him, I'm going to bribe him to attack the north from the very north. Now he's down here at the south, basically he's trying to stop um, them from, from, he's trying to cripple Jerusalem, the heart of, uh, of Judah. So he, he bribes with lots of gold and silver. He bribes uh, the, um, the king, and the king attacks from the north. He attacks the northern, uh, the, he attacks the northern kingdom from the very north. Ha! Basha has to quit. What he's doing down in Ramah, and he sends his forces back up uh, to take on Syria. That goes on for a while, but meanwhile, Asa comes in and takes back Ramah, takes the, the all the stuff they were doing, and use that to further fortify um, his buffer, if you will. Okay, so that that worked out, but. We enter another prophet. And this prophet says, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You didn't, you have this problem. You don't come to me. You don't come to God. You count on yourself and you bribe one of your enemies to do this. You don't count on me. Bad things are going to happen to you because of that. You're disobeying God. So, um, that, that <laughs> he basically tells them that's going to happen. And later, 
and about just near near the end, uh, near the end of this period, he, he was not happy with this with that prophet. He threw him into the stockades, put him, you know, he just he was basically uh, not happy, not happy that this guy uh, told him that he was doing wrong. Okay, so in about the 39th year, so in the last two years, uh, he developed a disease in his feet. I don't know exactly what it was, but uh, that, that sickness. And uh, again, he didn't count on God. He counted on the physicians. He didn't count on God for assistance. He counted on the physicians. And, and lo and behold, uh, uh, he, he's, he's not doing what God wants him to do again. And uh, he, then, he's, he dies and is followed by his son, um, Jehoshaphat, which we'll talk about later. So, Basha, same period of time, again, but we're talking about this guy. So, he was the one that was fighting with Asa. So, so his story, uh, which we've kind of covered pretty much, uh, but in his third year of the reign, uh, he was encamped. He's when he, when he uh, decided to kill uh, the king, then king, he successfully conspires to do it. He murders and kills the king. He becomes, he makes himself king. Okay. Uh, he gets supported by the military leaders at the time. He then wipes out all of Jeroboam's family, as had been prophesied. So, Basha carries out God's wishes, destroys, totally destroys uh, that lineage. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, during the reign, he started lots of campaigns against uh, Asa and Judah. And we talked about this one. We just, this is kind of repeat, but, you know, he does, he does try to, uh, to stifle, if you will, control the, the economy of, um, uh, the economy of Jerusalem by basically controlling all the trade routes. We, we, I, we just said the story about how Asa contracts uh, for mercenaries who attack, attack Basha in the north, makes him go up there. He then takes over, um, takes control, uh, the Asa, and Basha basically uh, slips. So. He he was an he was definitely an idolatrous king, and um, and basically he's also told by uh, Jehu I think yes that uh, his his, his family is going to basically suffer the same thing that Jeroboam does, so uh, that will later get fulfilled when his son is king, so. He dies of a natural death, and he's succeeded by his son. Okay, so now, real quickly, we're going to just talk about these last three kings. These are all in the northern kingdom. They're all bad, bad, bad. Uh, they don't serve for a very long period of time. So we have these three kings with, that are at the end of Asa's reign. So... We'll just talk about them real briefly. So, Elah, he is the king. He is uh, Basha's son. He's king for only two years. Um, uh, he's engaged in, uh, in a battle. And let me go to this here. He's, in, he's engaged in a battle with the Philistines, which we, we talked about. But he's not there. He's at the capital city with one of his guys, and he's basically drunk. Okay? He's basically drunk. Uh, so one of the captains of, of the king, of military captains, he takes advantage of the situation and kills him making himself king. So, uh, that, so, 
So when this happened, so uh, like Jehu had said, this is going to happen. Well, he he is going. His whole family is going to get destroyed. But um, so he's drunk. He's now he's only been there for two years. He's drunk. He gets killed, and this guy Zimri, Zimri becomes king. He is king for seven days. <laughs> seven days. Because he gets attacked by one of the king's military leaders. He sieges this capital. This guy, Zimri, he sets fire to the palace and he killed himself. Okay? So, that was the end of him. Uh, uh, so, uh, Omri became, becomes king. And I should point out that, uh, yeah, he becomes king and is king for a peri quite a period of time. For a period of time, and uh, he will he will live for a while. And he's still bad king, but he's king for several years. I think eleven. I have to go back to the previous slide. They believe eleven years. But interesting thing, there's another guy. TIB, uh, starts with the TIB, uh, who, who also says he's king at the same time. He only lasts for a few years and he goes away. So he overlapped with Omri. So there's a couple of people who say they were king at that time. But he becomes a king and, um, and that kind of ends this period of history. And well, that's where we'll pick up when the next time. So is there any questions? That was kind of fast. Jehu there. Jehu. Is, Jehu. Jehu. The one who's closest to a good king. Yep. Oh, well, that's another one, though. Yeah, later. Jehu. Yeah, there's Jehu the prophet. Yeah. And there's Jehu. We were talking about Jehu the prophet. And there's Jehu the king who will come later. Just like there's another Jeroboam later, too. Okay, any questions? All right, well, let's just close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, delve into your word. We ask that you bless our service to come. We ask us all this in Jesus' name. Amen.